Hey guys, in this video we will talk a little bit about the history of the Pentium 4, then we'll check out some hardware components, some parts to put together a Pentium 4 retro PC. We'll talk about the software, the Windows 98 and the drivers. Unfortunately, sometimes things go wrong, so we'll also talk about that. We have a few benchmarks coming up to see what the machine can do. And of course, we will check out some classic games to bring back those happy memories. So the Pentium 4 launched in 2000. It's a processor from Intel. It's based on the infamous NetBurst micro architecture with the aim to achieve a high clock speed to get better performance. The Pentium 4 featured a much longer pipeline compared to previous processors. Initially, it had a clock speed of only 1.3 gigahertz, but went all the way up to 3.8. Over the years, the Pentium 4 saw quite some changes with different sockets, different chipsets, even different RAM technologies like RDRAM, SDRAM, and then DDRM with dual channel. When the Pentium 4 launched, the initial reviews, they were quite mixed, but Intel uh, spent a lot of resources to market and emphasize the high clock speed. With the higher clock speed, unfortunately, power consumption was quite high. You needed quite beefy CPU coolers, but for the context of retro gaming, we don't have to have the latest and greatest model. We can get something quite basic. It faced significant competition from AMD with the Athlon processors, but despite all these challenges, financially, the Pentium 4 was definitely a success. The uh, almost unlimited marketing resources of Intel definitely played a part, but we are playing older games. So we're gonna use Windows 98 and play some classic games. So hit the Pentium 4, maybe gets a second life. Okay, let's have a look at the parts for our test system today. This is a main board. It is from Intel, a Intel desktop motherboard. Model number is the D850. MD, so it's got the Intel i850 chipset with RAM bus memory. Micro ATX, so we have RAM bus memory, four memory slots, three PCI slots, HEP, and this one is for socket 478. We have two IDE channels as well as a floppy controller. Intel unfortunately removed all the downloads from the website, so we are unable to find BIOS downloads, manuals, drivers for this main board. So what I do to find the drivers is I run a Google search with the chipset uh, model number and then ASRock, Gigabyte or Asus and just download it from there. At the back of the main board, we have the usual ports. We have PS2, we have four USB 2 ports. So that makes it easy to connect USB input devices like a wireless keyboard and mouse, but also a USB storage to copy files from a USB thumb drive. We have zero parallel ports, there's ethernet and audio. When I first powered up the main board, nothing would happen. And usually my first uh, diagnostics is the memory. So I removed all the memory modules and tried again, and then everything worked just fine. So here we can see the RD RAM RAM bus. We have two 256 megabyte modules. So in total 512 megabytes for this machine, which is very much for Windows 98. And then these two modules here, these are basically Terminator modules. Uh, you need to have them installed, otherwise the machine will not work. Socket 478 coolers can be a little bit hard to find. I'm not sure if these ones are still available. This model is from StarTech. They sold brand new Socket 478 CPU coolers. They're rated up to around 2.6, 2.8 gigahertz only. So not good enough for high performance Pentium 4 CPUs, but for our 1.4 gigahertz processor, perfectly fine. For the graphics card, I do like to use NVIDIA GeForce FX video cards. For Windows XP and DirectX 9, they are not that great. They don't have the best reputation, but for Windows 98, they're actually pretty decent. Now this is the GeForce FX 5500. Unfortunately, it gave me issues. I would see some screen corruption at the post screen and at certain higher resolutions. And also when running 3D Mark, the machine would lock up. So I tried a few other video cards. This is the FX 5200. 
It is a little bit on the slow side with a 64-bit memory interface, but it is compatible and under Windows 98 it is decent enough for a wide range of games. And sometimes when I have a bit of spare time I like to test out a few video cards or parts that I haven't used before, like this one. This is the GeForce FX 5700LE and I wasn't quite sure how it uh, fits in the food chain compared to the other FX cards. So I ran some benchmarks in 3 Mark 99 Max. We're not seeing too much of a difference. 7510 for the FX 5200 compared to 7849 for the FX 5700LE. In 3 Mark 2000, a slightly bigger gap, 5,956 compared to 6,991. In general, I don't recommend using 3 Mark to compare individual GPUs. I like to run it to see if everything is stable and there are no crashes. Much better way to test GPUs and compare them is running a time demo in a game and then testing at various res uh, resolutions. Here we have GL Quake scaling from 800 by 600 to 1280 by 1024 and we can see that the FX 5700 LE is quite a bit faster at 1280 by 1024, 67 FPS compared to 41.6. We want some decent audio for our games and once again I use the Sound Blaster Live. The model number, it's up here, it's the CT4830 for PCI. Really good sound cards and it lets you enable EAX. Here we have uh, an example in System Shock 2 comparing what EAX adds to the sound. Left, right. Left, right. Finding the right sound drivers can be challenging especially if you have an OEM version of the Sound Blaster Live. So the community has figured out we can use the Audigy 2 ZS drivers and they work flawlessly. For storage we're using a modern SSD. This is a SATA SSD from SanDisk with a capacity of 32 gigabytes which makes it very retro friendly and we're using this adapter from StarTech. This is a SATA to ID adapter. So here goes the ID ribbon cable plugs in into the main board and here goes your power and yeah the performance of this solution is pretty decent we're getting around 80 megabytes a second for reading and around 60 megabytes a second for writing and to initially boot the machine we're using the GoTech floppy emulator that makes it easy to partition and format the SSD software installation was pretty straightforward we have Windows 98 SE of course you can grab a copy from winworld.com. After that, we're installing the Intel chipset drivers, followed by the NVIDIA graphics drivers. I like to use version 56.64 for the GeForce FX cards. Then we've got the Audigy 2 ZS drivers for the Sound Blaster Live. I'm doing a few little tweaks, like muting all the mixer inputs to have the card nice and quiet. And there's another uh, setting for the audio acceleration uh, for the audio bitrate conversion set that to high quality and also DirectX 9 and that's it and now let's have a look at some classic games and for this video I wanted to spend more time actually playing and enjoying these games and telling you more about them I feel that in past videos I sort of would rush uh, through the games and focus mostly on the performance so here we have the first game this is Screamer 4x4 it's developed by Channel 42 software developer and was released in the year 2000. Now this version is from GOG and you can play this happily on the retro PC. You just install it on your modern machine and copy the folder across. In the game folder you will find three executables. One for Direct 3D, one for OpenGL and one for Glide. So that's awesome if you have a Voodoo card you can play with the Glide API. I found that Direct3D runs a little bit slower with something around 20 FPS, whereas OpenGL runs much better. We're getting around 30 FPS. So this game is quite interesting. It's a four-wheel drive off-road racing simulation and it has some really nice licensed cars and it's got realistic physics. You can, for example, shift uh, to low and high gear, set the differentials and 
Now turn on the lights and everything and there is rain and weather simulation going on and yeah it's it is a racing game so you have to uh, drive fairly quickly but not too fast because if you drive too fast you're gonna crash your car so it's a balancing act between speed and being careful. I played the first few stages and overall this is a really fun game. If you like racing games you should definitely check it out and if you're not really into racing games well maybe this one is different enough for you to have some fun. By the way we're running at 800 by 600 resolution and I have maxed out all the details. Here we have the next game this is Shogo Mobile Armor Division a game developed by Monolith Productions. It's a first person game with uh, anime uh, influence and you can yeah you run around on foot but you can also pilot a giant mech there are lots of weapons and it has some story there's lots of dialogue going on with cheesy lines and um, yeah so far i've played a little bit seems quite decent again we're running at 800 by 600 this game only supports 16-bit colors so it's a little bit rough on the textures and you get some dithering but it's not too bad. And the options, when you launch the game, you can configure some of the options. I changed the audio to make sure it's using EAX. And then I noticed some flickering issues in the game. And uh, I figured out how you can fix that. You go into the graphics options and turn on triple buffering and then the game runs well. So this is another game I can highly recommend you. Um, yeah, haven't played too much, a little bit, maybe the first two missions or so and so far it's been pretty fun. Things don't always go to plan and when I tried System Shock 2 I ran into quite a few issues. So this is again the GOG release but it's heavily modified to be compatible with modern machines and that breaks compatibility with Windows 98 retro PCs. So I tried to get things working you can go online and get the ISO images from archive.org. I installed the game, I patched the game and I wanted to see if I can copy the executable into the GOG folder and make the game run. This did work, the game launches and I can configure the options and so on but as soon as I actually uh, want to run the game it crashes. But it turns out that that crash has nothing to do with the GOG version and patches there is some sort of incompatibility with the system and the game. Maybe it's a graphics driver or the DirectX version because later I tried it in 86 box, which is a emulator, a virtual machine. And here with a virtual Voodoo 3, uh, the patched GOG game worked just fine. Anyway, we have one more game that I played quite extensively. This is Total Annihilation from Cave Dog Entertainment from 1997 a real-time strategy game and again it's the GOG version DRM free and it comes with the two expansions and again initially this game didn't work so here what GOG did it uses some DLL files to play the CD audio tracks um, without a CD basically from a bunch of mp3 files and again that breaks compatibility with Windows 98 so what I did I uh, fired up the virtual machine and I installed the game from discs including the two expansion packs and then the latest patch um, and then I used a no CD patch and used that executable, dropped it into the GOG game folder and then the game would work. Unfortunately we're not getting music so if you want the original music being played you really have to play from the discs. This game really impressed me. Firstly, from a technical point of view, it runs uh, really well on this machine. Uh, no lagging, even when you have lots of units and you uh, build up an army and then steamroll the opponent. Everything is silky smooth. And I was also impressed by the uh, resolution. So initially I played it 800 by 600, but then I, I saw you can play it at 1280 by 1024 and it really scales all the graphics. So guys, I really enjoyed this project. Uh, many of you know that I'm a big fan of the Pentium 4. Now, back in the day I had a Pentium 4 and it never gave me any issues. I was aware that the Athlon 64 and the Athlon XP, that they were very competitive and a lot of people went with those platforms. But I liked my Pentium 4, everything was stable, I didn't have any issues and yeah, I played 
and enjoyed the games very much. And now, as we are older and the parts get older, the Pending 4 is sort of forgotten. A lot of people ignore the platform, but it's actually really capable for retro gaming because we can basically use some really average parts. We don't need the highest end parts. We can go with a 1.4, 2 gigahertz Pentium 4 and then install Windows 98 and we will get outstanding performance, which is right at the level of a really high end Pentium 3, which are much more sought after. Another aspect with the Pentium 4 is there are so many different versions. There are three sockets in total. It launched with socket 423 and then 478 and then finally LGA 775. The Netburst architecture, single core, hyper threading and then even dual core CPUs. So um, there's a wide range of parts that you can choose. Now if you're building a Windows XP machine, you definitely should be looking elsewhere. LGA 775 like a core 2 or even later a core i3 or i5 has much better performance and if you like uh, AMD you can go with the AM2 platform, AM3 platform like uh, Phenom 2 X2 is a beautiful processor for Windows XP retro gaming. But when it comes to compatibility with Windows 98 and MS-DOS the Pentium 4 is a really nice solid platform. You need to watch out a little bit for capacitors. It was right at the time where companies tried to save money and used cheap capacitors, so you might have to do some desoldering and replace those caps. For DOS gaming in particular, the Pentium 4 might be too fast. There are some ways to slow it down by disabling the cache, um, but it's not perfect. Certainly not as nice as having a Socket 7 machine. And now I want to hear from you. What is your take on the Intel Pentium 4? What did you have back in the day? What about now? Do you love the Pentium 4? Do you hate it? What is your opinion? And yeah, I've changed a few things with the format in this video. Please let me know if you enjoyed it. Give it a like, give it a thumbs down if you didn't like it. Leave a comment down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And do check those notifications. Make sure you're getting all the updates. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I shall see you soon with another one.